Okay, this is just a quick video answering some of the comments I keep on getting on Facebook, Instagram, and on my YouTube channel, just basically so I don't have to keep on repeating myself, looking at the arpeggiator modes, looking at the voice allocation and voice stealing, and then moving from pattern to pattern. Is that a smooth transition or not? When I'm talking about voice allocation, if we come into pattern mode, we can see here that we've got voice reserve up to 60 voices. It says 60 voices in the manual. What is a voice? So big question, is this a voice? Or is that four voices? Whereas a synth, you'd say that's a single voice with four oscillators. Each of those is slightly pitched differently. Let's just go and make it more obvious that there's four in there. Okay, so is that taking up four of these, or is it taking up one? So I tried to create something that was using up 60 voices. So there I'm using Four voices, I've got a bass, or sorry, four tracks. I've got a bass, I've got a pad, I've got a pad, and I've got an arpeggiator. If we go into the voices themselves, we can see on the bass, we're using three oscillators, or th sorry, three voices, I think, or a thought, um, which happens to be the case, you'll see in a second. This is four voices, T track three is four voices, and track four is three voices. Uh, the bass is playing one note at a time, the arpeggio is playing one note at a time, and these two are playing lots of notes at the same time. So if we come into pattern two, for example, we're playing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we play that, just mute everything else. So pattern sound. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We play track three. It's playing five. So one, two, three, four, five. And they're overlapping, as you can hear, which means that voice or track two is playing seven times four, which is 28. Track three is playing five times four, which is 20. So they're using 48 between them. And then 51, if we include the bass. Takes us up to 54 with the arpeggiator. And let's add the drums. So there's an awful lot happening in that, but I haven't used the 60 voices I worked out at the end. So 54 plus the, um, plus the tones from the drums. If we go into the drums, they're each playing one, sample. Play the whole thing again. Just listening to this voice here. No voice stealing, but as I said, um, you know, I didn't realise I hadn't used 60 up, so I have now made this. If we come into here. I've turned the arpeggiator into a pad, and this pad has got three oscillators and I'm playing four notes at a time, so that's using up 12. So from a 54, I'm now using 66, maybe. So if we come back, put everything else on, whoops. I'm 
I'm listening to him if we get any voice stealing. And we do, there we go. So we're on about 66 plus the drums, 72 perhaps. And we are getting some stealing on this tone. There you go, again, okay. Bring everything back in though. Not hugely noticeable, but if you are doing something ambient that's relying on those things, the voice limit is 60 and a voice is what we'd normally think of as an oscillator. Okay, next up, transition from pattern to pattern. If I come in here, play this. I've got a single tone that's playing on part one. Let's turn all the others down just to demonstrate that. And then we'll go to pattern two. It's not changed. But we've got a bass now playing through this part one here. So the change from pattern one to pattern two, we can still hear this thing is overlapping, it's still playing on. Oddly enough though, when we go back to pattern one, it stops. So overlapping now, go to another one so it's like they've only programmed it in to do it um, from one pattern to the next not to the following one but you know we have to take into account there that that's a ridiculously long release and a very short bar of only four beats but you will have noticed there that the transition from pattern to pattern was smooth if we come to some of the the presets perhaps It's waiting for the end of the pattern. So, no delays, really smooth transition from one pattern to the next. Next up was the arpeggiator. When we click on shift and arpeggiate, we get the arpeggiator settings. But if we look here, we've got a little one. Now we've got a two, now we've got a three, now we've got a four, and now we've got a rhythm. And actually, each of the tracks has got its own arpeggiator settings. So, I went and I made this little thing. Was it here? Nope. Here we go. So, I think there's three parts playing there, and they've all got a different arpeggio or arpeggiator on them. If we go into part one, arpeggiator, it's up um, in an eighths, part two is up in sixteenths, part three is up and down in eighths, and the rhythm part was up in sixteenths as well, so. Eighths, sixteenths, up and down in eighths, and I program that using the arpeggiator as well. And I think that's it, I think that's all I wanted to demo, but as I say, they crept up a few times, so worthwhile just demoing it and showing how it works. In reality, and um, especially with the note allocation or the voice stealing, whatever you want to call it, you know, there's an awful lot in there. There's 60 of them, but 60 is quite a lot when you've got five parts, um, or only got five parts, I should say. So, you know, I did have to go out of my way to use them up. Okay, but I did manage it in the end. Anyway, I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. If it was, please think about subscribing, ring the bell, join me on Patreon, all the rest of it. Help support the channel, and I will see you next time.